Hello YouTube. Just wanted to put up a quick video on uh, creating your own ESXi white box. Um, I've been watching a lot of videos on, on YouTube and I, I, I see a lot of people buying old servers, talking about buying server boards and all these server components and um, I think people are just going a little crazy building their white boxes. Um, why would you want a, a ESXi white box? Um, just to tinker around. Um, if you go to tinkertry.com, he has a um, person over there has a great site building out your his uh, ESXi server with um, a lot of server components. Spending about two thousand dollars on on various things. Um, I just wanted to throw out. A, a quick video saying that well you want to tinker with stuff uh, especially specifically ESXi you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on an, on an old server uh, which would probably cost you lots and lots of money in, in terms of electricity also servers make a lot of noise um, they just they just do from all the fans that they have and the way they're designed to to blow air through the uh, chassis so uh, this is a, more a video about building your own EX. ESXi white box with parts that you have laying around using that old PC. Um, I would say maybe not older than three years, but using parts you might have lying around. So every you know a lot of PC people they they upgrade. You know you, every every time there's a new CPU out or maybe there's a new architecture or something, and you know you tend to upgrade and then you discard these boards and and they may be sitting around doing nothing or they they might be serving other purposes but if you think about it ESXi can run multiple virtual machines and if your your parts uh, can handle it you can you probably can kill several birds with one stone what, what do I mean by that um, you can probably run several of your machines at home in the virtual world as opposed to having a physical box so uh, th that's beyond this conversation here where I'm just trying to show you uh, things you could do to build out a, a simple white box at home without going crazy and, and spending a lot of money. Um, basically what I have in front of me here is a, a, an old motherboard that I have, old CPU and some old hard drives and I'll show you all the uh, parts in a second. The idea is that you have spare PCs laying around at home, things that are not used anymore. Uh, maybe they're just doing, they're just sitting around, booted up once a week to do uh, capture a video or something. Or maybe they're just, um, maybe it's your surveillance uh, PC where you're capturing video for surveillance uh, via IP cameras. Things that might be just doing secondary tasks laying around. And, and a lot of people have that, you know, they might have two or three PCs at home running. Um, you could consolidate with virtual uh, uh, technology such as ESXi. So what are some of the things you have to worry about? Um, first thing is, you know, finding your old, your, the old parts that might work. So here I have a old Athlon X4 quad core CPU. Um, this particular motherboard, an Asus motherboard, was able to unlock two cores. So I have six cores running on this X4. Um, so that's the first thing is you want to have more than four cores or, or, or four or more. Um, when you're running multiple virtual machines, you don't want it to. It'll slow down if it has to schedule. Have this, if the ESXi scheduler has to to start thinking about who has, who should get time to the CPU at any particular point in time. So you want to have as many cores as possible, and your virtual machines need to run as little cores as possible. So for instance, um, it would be great to be running if you're still running Windows XP, single core or even dual core, but mm, you, you you don't want to run multiple quad core virtual machines on a quad core processor because um, they're all going to be waiting on CPU time. So uh, find an old PC that might be a quad core. And another thing you want to worry about in your your old PCs is that not all of, not all of the um, chips within the past three years support virtualization technologies. So AMD um, has been supporting it the longest, I, I feel, um, and Intel. So you have to look at what CPU you, you're going to reuse and make sure that it has virtualization technology and it's different for each uh, vendor so uh, Intel calls it one thing and then AMD calls it another so uh, you want to make sure that it supports virtualization technology and also you want to make sure it's 64-bit capable um, so that's the first thing so this particular chip is only two two years old and um, you know it was sitting around for a past year doing nothing because I now have a um, 
uh, an Ivy Bridge as my primary PC. So uh, this was just discarded. Um, it was serving as a home theater PC for a little while, but I mean that's overkill. So uh, I repurposed it now as my ESXi white box. Uh, the second thing you want to worry about is the whether or not you have enough RAM. Um, this motherboard chipset only supports um, 16 gig. So I have 16 gig here. Um, if it could support more, you want to buy some RAM. Uh, if you're if you're looking at the market right now, it's September, October. Um, it's RAM is very expensive, so you, you need to maximize it where you can. And obviously, if you're talking about a, a very old system, you may not want to buy that RAM for that very old system. It may be worthwhile updating your motherboard, but. That's a whole nother topic. So here I'm just trying to reuse what I have. So I had this laying around. So I'm going to use reuse the 16 gigabyte uh, of RAM. Um, I have a Intel NIC over here, Intel Pro 1000 desktop NIC on the PCI Express slot. Uh, ESXi needs a NIC that is in the hardware compatibility list. So you want to make sure you find something in there. Um, this uh, chipset has a Realtek um, 8168, I believe, or, or an 8111 um, chipset. And ESXi 5.1 will support the Realtek NIC. Um, I'm right now on ESXi 5.5, which does not have the Realtek NIC drivers, but um, I've, I've gone to Tinkertry, um, tinkerertry.com and uh, have downloaded his um, uh, drivers for that and, and, and just injected it into the ISO. And, and that's another the whole story for for googling and, and another topic i won't go into that here so now that you have your cpu you have your ram you have a nick card that's going to be recognized um just go ahead and install or uh, get download esxi from vmware um 5.5 or 5.1 and and just boot up and see if it will be recognized um can will it have any errors uh, what kind of errors do you see? Um, just try it. I, I tried it on three of my spare boxes, and um, two out of three worked fine. So you could use old old PCs. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go out and buy the best components. Um, I have no RAID in this thing, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, another thing you want to make sure you have is as many ports as possible, SATA ports, because depending on how many virtual machines you want to run, you want to have as many drives per virtual machine if you can. Um, an another more expensive route is to buy a RAID card and RAID drives, and that could wind up adding another 1000 or or more to your costs. And this is about the video about using what you got at home, right, and just using spare parts. So I'm just showing you that you can use some old parts if you have them lying around. Uh, another thing I, I can show you here is that... Um, I'm using a USB header to um, a port that you can put on your USB flash card. And this is where I installed ESXi. So that way, you know, I don't have to waste the hard drive. Um, you can install it onto a USB uh, drive. And the USB drive can be in the back of the chassis, but I, I feel that that's a little dangerous. It could be knocked off, bend, bend the metal motherboard ports or whatever so I decided to put it on the header uh, inside the chassis um, the only problem is that a lot of motherboards do not boot from a header they only boot from the back ports so for instance if this USB drive was in the back of the PC it would reboot without a problem um, however it doesn't like to reboot from a header so I always have to go hit F uh, this particular board is F8 but um, some of my other motherboards is F11 and it could be anything it depends on your brand uh, and your BIOS so you would boot up hit the F button and then go choose your uh, USB drive to boot now ESXi can fit into a 4 gig stick now this particular stick is a 1 gig stick and ESXi just barely fits in there so um, I would use a 4 gig stick. I just again, I'm using what I have laying around, so no big deal. Um, now, the only thing new here about this particular build is the chassis, and now I'll talk about why um, I had to go and buy a new chassis. Um, again, hard drives. You want as many slots as possible. Now, I'm using a an Arctic. Um, what the hell is this thing? Um, an Arctic, uh, I forget the, name, the exact name brand of it, um, but it's, um, I'm sorry, it's a uh, fractal design. Fractal design, uh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, it has eight drive slots, 
and I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six slots for for now. Um, this motherboard only has six SATA ports. Um, I have no CD-ROM drive. You do not need a CD-ROM drive. So what what you would do is you would use like a laptop portable USB CD-ROM drive, and boot ESXi off of that, and then from that install it off to the USB CD into the USB stick, and, they, and then you would you wouldn't need that USB CD anymore. So I use the portable one. I have one for my laptop, so I just plug it into the USB, boot it off of that. So that's another requirement is that you can boot off USB. Um, makes the life much more easier instead of wasting a hard drive just for ESX, which I don't recommend. You want every drive to be a data store drive, not a uh, a boot drive. So uh, with this six drives, what I do is um, one drive holds ISOs. There's a data store that just holds ISOs. Um, and then these four drives, which are small leftover drives I had laying around, um, are just running virtual machines. One virtual machine per drive so that they have dedicated I.O. Um, that's going to be your bottleneck. So right now I can run up to four virtual machines. And the fifth, uh, I use this particular drive. It's a green drive. You can see the green poking out from there. The green drive is uh, more or less just for quick testing. Um, I don't really want to run anything day to day on a green drive um, if I can help it. Um, if I find that I'm running more than four or five virtual machines, then I'll just go back to the first one and run the second one. So I wouldn't want to run more than maybe two virtual machines per physical drive. Again, you'll find out by experimentation uh, where your bottlenecks are, but disk drive I.O. is going to be one of them. So the, hence the 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 large amount of drives you want eight you want I want I wanted eight and um, I'm out of ports but I can certainly experiment with adding a PCI uh, Express or PCI expansion card for SATA but then again then you have to worry about whether or not ESXi will recognize it right so hence um, you know you want to go with a board with as many ports as possible in this particular case I have six ports um, so I have six drives um, of course you can go with SSDs and I don't know about ESXi 5.1 support of trim, but I think 5.5 supports trim now. And Or you can go with a, a, a more modern SSD, um, and of course that means spending money, uh, that might do its own garbage collection and not worry too much about trim. Um, and of course, uh, with them dropping in price, maybe you buy one every two months or whatever, whatever your budget allows. And you, you can swap, I can swap these out with... Um, you know SSDs and maybe get four different SSDs and then it'll be a much more quicker machine it can run more virtual machines but then again depending on what you're doing you may need more raw space so these green drives are one terabyte these four old drives here are really really old uh, but they're still working max store 250 gig drives 250 gig each so uh, you know you, you gotta think about your use case scenario you're not creating a, a home server media server you could um, obviously these could be two terabyte drives and if they were you could create a virtual home server with uh, media storage uh, using um, virtual data stores or I'm sorry virtual drives and that could be how you would do it inside a virtual machine um, certainly that's doable but then again if I use double my drive space then I can't run any more virtual machines that defer defeats the purpose of having a all-purpose white box that you can play with that you can put on multiple operating systems okay I think I've uh, gone long enough here so um, again this is just my ESXi white box on a budget using old PC parts. You, you've um, you know taken away something uh, from this video, um, and that you'll you'll start looking around and seeing well what can I use to to build an ESXi white box? Um, no need for expensive RAID cards or uh, RAID hard drives or SSDs. Um, you know I can build probably a good uh, eight virtual machines off my 16 gig if uh, I'm using small virtual machines and you know, with specific tasks again.